captains, and what does that mean to you? Yeah, I think, um, you know, being a sophomore and being young, um, you know, I just felt blessed and um, accomplished. Um, you know, I know us three are, are honored to be a part of this team, and um, I think ultimately, you know, guys are going to look towards us because we've been here. We have so many new guys, and so, um, you know, we're honored to be able to, to hold that title. Yeah, for me, very blessed and honored as well. Um, I guess now I'm kind of an older guy being a junior here, but being in the program one year um, just means a lot. We had a lot of guys leave last year, and for all the new guys that come in and uh, vote me, Stovall, and Zach Morris as captains, it's a great honor. Peyton, Coach Van Horn has talked a lot about just the pressure that you felt last season because of all the hype around you. Just is, Do you feel like that pressure is kind of off this year, and what kind of weight does that lift off your shoulders? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think I put too much pressure on myself last year and just had unrealistic expectations of myself. And, um, you know, ultimately it caused me to fail. But um, I thought I thought it was good for me. I needed that. And um, everything that I went through last year, um, it only made me stronger for the postseason and, and going into this year. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to this year. Um, you know, I'm, I like to kind of go fly under the radar per se, um, just go out there and just play um, some baseball and, and not think about that at the end of the game or at the end of the day. I just uh, I kind of look at it as just a game and just having fun. So um, I, I for sure definitely think that, uh, you know, there's some pressure that's lifted off. Jace, Dave said that you were kind of fed up after how last year went. I was just curious for your side of, you know, going into this year after everything that happened last year. Yeah, I'm very excited, uh, especially being a captain. Um, the guys are going to look up for me to lead um, this team. Uh, yeah, last year was a freak deal. Um, it happens that sometimes it's just baseball. Um, and, you know, everyone has their own journey. And I'm just really excited to get on the season and play and, and go win, like, win games and get to Omaha and hopefully win the last game of the season. Peyton, Dave was in here talking about how important communication is with the infield and kind of getting to know some guys. And you've obviously got a lot of new faces that you're playing around and in a new position. Just how do you feel that dynamic has played out so far as you're kind of getting to know some of these guys and getting more comfortable with them? Yeah, I think, um, you know, everybody, you know, we came in here, it took probably a month just to know everybody's name um, just because there's so many new guys. But I think just knowing more or just having so much newer guys and, um, you know, so many spots open. I think it, it goes for better practices and um, competitions. A lot better practices are, are really up. The energy is awesome. Um, and so it makes for really tough competitive practices. But um, the dynamic has been great this fall. Um, the team, the chemistry of this team and the camaraderie of this team has, um, has been unbelievable. I mean, everybody hangs out with everybody um, off the field. Um, there's a lot of stuff we do. We always go eat together. We go to football games together, basketball games together. Um, you know, so I'm looking forward to this season with a bunch of new guys. Jace, kind of along those same lines, the outfield's got a lot of new faces as well. You know, Mason and uh, Tavian and uh, Jared. What, what, what can Arkansas fans expect from them? What are your impressions of them so far? Yeah, uh, different personalities for sure, um, but all really good players. All have different tools that, that they show and display. Uh, you know, Tavian's really fast. Mason's really fast. Um, Wegner's got a lot of pop. I mean, he can also run a lot too. Uh, but, yeah, kind of piggybacking off what Peyton was saying um, with the, the communication and the competitiveness, um, it's, it's a, it, it takes a little bit getting used to, obviously. But I know if, like, Peyton comes out to, to right field and wants a call for ball, like, obviously he wants me to call him off. And so, like, he trusts me and he knows me that I'll come, I'll come catch that fly ball. So stuff like that, building that with the other outfielders, with Tavian, Mason, and Jared, um, that's going to be crucial. Uh, Peyton, Dave said that uh, late in the season you talked, and did that have an impact on you know, kind of loosening up after that? And also, how much second base have you played in your life? Yeah, so um, you know, I've played I've played second base for um, pretty much as long as I can remember. I've always either played short or second, but um, second I'm more comfortable at. Um, I played there. I started three years there in high school, and um, so I'm I'm definitely comfortable there. There, but. Um, yeah, me and Coach Van Horn, um, kind of during that stretch, that two weeks I didn't play, um, we sat down and, you know, at kind of around that time is really when I was putting so much pressure on myself that, um, you know, it kind of got to a point to where I didn't even feel like, um, you know, like baseball is fun to me. And, um, you know, that's something as a baseball player that it's meant to be played for fun. And we sat down and we had a, a great conversation. And during those two weeks, it made me realize, like, hey, this is just a game. It's just meant to be played for fun. And, you know, I know I use that word fun a lot in baseball because that's how it's meant to be played. And, um, you know, you're at your best when you're having fun and, and playing carefree. And so, um, you know, we sat down and, and he talked to me and, 
you know, I told him I was going to continue to work as hard as I could. And, um, you know, ultimately I wanted to, he still, but he said that he believed in me and um, continued to believe in me. And he was still going to give me a, uh, plenty of opportunities. And, um, you know, fortunately for me, I was able to have success down the road. Um, and I think a huge part of that played into that meeting that I had with Coach Van Horn. For both of you guys, Dave talked about how it's probably the deepest pitching staff he's ever had. I'm curious from y'all's perspective, you know, just how tough it is to go against those guys. Yeah, I think um, our pitching is uh, extremely, extremely um, deep. You know, we have guys like Hagen and Cody and, and Hunter and, and Wiggins and guys like that, that, you know, all those guys could start, but you can only start three guys on the weekend. And so, um, you know, we're going to have options to choose from. And, you know, you have guys like Will who are coming back who pitched phenomenal for us down the postseason and, and down late in the uh, stretch last year. Um, but I'm excited uh, to see our pitchers. Um, we're doing some live at-bats today. and. Um, we got some we got some dudes that we got to face and um, it's going to be tough and you know it should be tough because I mean it's going to be tough for other um, batters and, and teams and so I'm looking forward to those guys uh, pitching this year for us and we also have a lot of new guys too. Um, Gage Wood sticks out to me. He pitched phenomenal yesterday. I think he struck out. I think he faced four batters, struck out all four. Um, you know he's a freshman. He's super ultra talented. Has really good stuff and um, you know there's other guys that I can name but I'm looking I'm really looking forward to watching them be able to pitch this year. Yeah, just the, the pitching staff, like you said, it's very deep. Um, having a conversation in the exit meeting with Coach Van Horn, just about the pitching, like Peyton named some of those pitchers off. They could be starters, they could be relievers, they could be closers. Like, I'm not even sure, like, they know what they want to be yet. And so that's kind of like just talks about how deep and, and good they are because they all have a lot of talent, they all have good stuff. But like Peyton said, there's only three spots on the weekend. So whoever gets those spots, we all know they're going to go out there and pitch their best, and we believe in them. Uh, and then if they're not, they're going to come in and shut them down. So. Dave, Dave talked about Wiggins having, you know, being particularly tough. We all know he's got an electric arm, but he's had control issues at times. What, what, what have you guys seen from him? Maybe the improvements he's made in particular. Yeah, I mean, this this fall, man, he was lights out. I mean, like you said, he's uber talented. You know, he's got an unbelievable fastball, and he really um, took a step this fall. I thought just really commanding the zone, throwing his off speed for strikes, just keeping the hitters off balance. I mean, he was virtually unhittable. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with, you know, what Jay said. I remember seeing him, and I'm only facing him a couple times, but I especially remember facing him um, in that fall classic when we faced each other. And he was the starter for the other team, and I just remember seeing him. And um, I think the first pitch he threw to me, um, you know, got on me quick. And, you know, I'm kind of shaking my head like, and this dude, he looks different. And, um, you know, so we're excited to uh, to have him. And, and, you know, he's just – he's been grinding in the weight room. He's – um, you know, doing stuff extra. And so we're really looking forward to seeing him make this jump this year and, um, you know, kind of going off what Jay said about commanding. I think the, the big thing that sticks out to me with him is he commands his off speed. Um, that's what he's done exceptionally well in the fall. So um, I'm looking forward to continuing for him to build on that. Hey, Peyton, going back to second base, you know, you got to play beside Robert Moore all year last year. What are some things you took away from his game that you think you can benefit from? Yeah, I think, um, you know, just the, the amount of work that he put in, you know, there's a reason. It's not a it's not a fluke that he won. He was the best second baseman in college baseball last year. I mean, he would stay hours and hours just to take ground balls. And, um, you know, just just kind of seeing that and, um, you know, that, that pushes me to know, like, that's how, that's how good I want to be. And, um, you know, just having him as a mentor out there, um, you know, all the time. I played first last year, obviously, but, um, you know, I'd take ground balls at second, too, um, you know, because I think I played like two games uh, midweek when he got a rest day. And um, so I'd go out there with him and, and I'd practice with him. And he taught me a lot. He told me just how to com keep my composure, um, you know, just little things like that. Um, moves to my left or right that could make me just a, a step faster, which is huge in baseball. And um, so just little things like that. I can't thank him enough for what he's done. Uh, for both you guys, uh, Dave mentioned it a few minutes ago, the talent and experience around the SEC this year. I'm curious just how do you guys uh, are, are approaching that this year? Yeah, I mean, the talent and experience of everyone coming back. Um, I talked about it earlier. We just lost a lot of our, our guys, veteran guys. Um, so it's definitely going to be a challenge. And I've talked to Brady Slavens about this um, when we were eating at w one, one restaurant around here. And we're talking about how we have a lot of new faces around this locker room. They've all played college baseball. But the SEC is like a different different type of conference. And so it, we, we, me and Brady are trying to, like, 
think of ways like how can we get our teammates ready to you know face this SEC competition and not get so sped up in the moment the first couple of weekends so we can just get off to a hot start and so it's definitely going to be a challenge um, with all the good teams around the conference it's going to be very fun though just competing against them yeah I think um, you know kind of what Jay said I think um, the SEC is going to be you know it's going to be just a dog fight um, week in and week out and um, it's going to be fun. I think the pitching's going to be up from what it was last year. Um, there's going to be some dudes on the mound that uh, we're going to face and um, dudes that we have that other teams are going to face. And um, It's going to be fun. I think the SEC West has probably the, strong, it's the toughest division in all of baseball. And so, um, you know, ultimately, I think that's why we had success as well down the road in, in the postseason was because the conference or the conference and the schedule that we faced um, in conference play. And so, um, yeah, we're looking forward to it and we're looking forward to compete and um, you know, there's no other better way to, to get that started than facing three really good teams in our um, three opening games. So what, what ideas have you guys come up with to let, let the newcomers understand the SEC before you actually start playing SEC games? Yeah, I don't know. It's still brainstorming. Um, I mean, the only thing I can guess is just kind of talk about personal experiences from what we've experienced. And, like, there's really – uh, two, two to four players last year on the offensive side that actually got to play in all the SEC stadiums and experience that atmosphere. Um, I'm sure Peyton can attest to all the, the tough crowds we played against, and we're going on the road versus a lot of good SEC West teams this year. So that's going to be a, a big jump for not only like me, but also like for the guys that are coming in as well. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that you can really tell someone from your personal experiences, kind of get them prepared to what to expect when you go into someone's stadium and they're uh, they're booing you and everything else, and the, the lights get a little brighter. Um, but, yeah, I think that's just kind of our job to kind of prepare our teammates that way. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's there's going to be times where guys mess up because, um, you know, I did it a ton last year as being young is, um, you know, there's, there's moments that do get too big, and that's just part of the game. Um, I think going in and, and having that experience now, I think ultimately um, just telling guys, like, you know, at the end of the day, like I've always said, it's baseball. Just have fun. Like, you know, just play, play like you always have. You know, and um, and I know it's tough to do sometimes, but um, just just slowing the game down, relax, and taking huge deep breaths. And um, at the end of the day, just staying confident, whether it's in the field or in the batter's box. Um, that's ultimately what's going to carry you to have success. And so, um, just just staying relaxed and um, just playing stress free is is um, you know all we can try to tell these guys. Going back to the pitching staff, it sounds like y'all added a couple of JUCO guys that are expected to have a big role in Cody Adcock and Hunter Holland. I'm curious what, what your thoughts and impressions are of them after going through the fall with them. Yeah, I thought um, I thought they were extremely good. I faced Hunter more than I did Cody, and um, Hunter's got kind of like a funky delivery, um, and, and he's you know low to mid 90s from the left side. And um, the thing with Hunter, with really both of them, um, they can throw three or four pitches in any type of count for strikes, and that's extremely tough to face as a batter. And um, you know, and so I think um, what really stands out to me between them two is their work ethic. They come in here; they're some of the first people to be in here and some of the last to leave. Um, you know, I know the pitchers lift before us, and um, you know, so we lift after them. And so an hour and a half, two hours by, and all the pitchers are left will, or have left, and Cody Adcock's still up here. Um, you know, he, he just wants to be around here. He wants to be around this pro, uh, program, this facility, uh, his teammates, just everything. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to those. I think those guys are going to have two really huge years for us. I'm excited to watch them pitch. Yeah, like Hunter Holland, like for a left-handed batter, that's just a tough at-bat. At and like, like uh, Stovall said, just the funkiness, how it comes out from the side, looks like it's coming behind you and then ends up right on the middle and you freeze and you strike out. Um, I think that just tells you how tough an at-bat that's going to be for other players that are going to have to face him. And then with Cody, um, right-handed pitcher, I mean, the thing that stands out to me when I face him is he, like, spots up really well with his fastball. I mean, he's throwing it right there on the black. He's not getting anything over the white. He's going to be a tough uh, pitcher to hit with mixing all his pitches, like Sobel said earlier, throwing them in any count he wants to. So I think those are two guys that are really going to help us down the stretch for sure. And one more pitcher I was going to ask about is Cody Frank, the transfer from Nebraska. What, what, are you, what are your impressions of him? What does he bring to the table? Yeah, so I actually faced him yesterday when we had some live at-bats. And um, I think he threw – he ended up throwing like 26 pitches to three – three different batters and he did not throw one pitch over the heart of the plate and still had uh, I want to say two strikeouts out of um, the three or four batters that he faced. Um, he spots up un unbelievably well. Um, there's nothing that he has thrown that was over the plate even really in the fall 
Um, but you can just tell, you know, he's an older guy. He's a veteran guy. That's he. He's been here before, and he's he's um he's he does things the right way. He comes in, gets his work done, and um you know he he's very poised out there. He's very relaxed, and and stuff doesn't get to him. And so, um you know, we're excited to be able to to watch him pitch for us this year. It's gonna um we're I'm gonna we're excited for him. Yeah, he's a really good pitcher. Obviously, um, yesterday watching some of our hitters face him. I mean, he plays to his strengths. He's going to sink the ball. He's going to keep it in the bottom of the zone. He's going to try to make you chase. And then the balls that you think are down or lower, they're like at the bottom of the zone, you strike out. So I think that just kind of like what Stovall was talking about, a veteran guy, very poised out there. Um, he knows how to take care of his business, and he's going to be a big part for us for sure. We've heard a couple times now from Dave that Tavian Josenberger has been a, a leader, you know, in the locker room with the team. From y'all's perspective, you know, how is he being a leader, and just what's it like having him on the team? Yeah, I think the uh, the kind of thing that stands out to me with Tavian is, um, you know, he goes in that weight room, and he's not one of the bigger guys on our team, but he does everything right in the weight room. He is, um, you know, he he does it cleanly. He doesn't rush anything, um, and guys gravitate towards that. I mean, you know, there's a couple freshmen that watch him work out, and it pushes them. And I think that's a huge thing, um, just getting stronger with Hunter and stuff. But Tavian's really taking it to another level as being a leader um, for, for a team he's never played for. And, um, you know, he leads by example a lot more than he does talking. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for him. I think he's going to have a really great year for us. And, um, you know, with the speed that he has and, and being able to switch, um, being able to hit from both sides, um, you know, he's a perfect prototypical leadoff batter. And, you know, he's going to see a bunch of pitches. I mean, we haven't seen pitching since the fall. And, and first at bat, he goes in there the day and has like an 11 pitch at bat. It was insane. And so, um, you know, he stepped up and um, in that leadership role. And, and I'm looking forward to watching him on the field this year. The other thing I think to add to that is just the guys love him because his energy he brings to the field each and every day. I mean, everyone kind of gravitates to him to talk to him, to get hype, you know, about whatever. Um, but I think Stovall said everything about that was pretty spot on. And then I believe you guys went to the Cape Cod League together. Just kind of talk about that experience of getting to go together. Yeah, so we uh, we roomed together um, in the Cape with our host family, <laughs> and uh, it was it was awesome. Um, you know, we were exhausted and. And we made it so far down the stretch in Omaha. And, you know, I was kind of hesitant to go just because I was so tired. But once I got there, I, I didn't want to leave. It was it was awesome. It was really fun. And, um, you know, it hitting with a wood bat against some of these guys that are the premier arms and, and just in all of college baseball, it only makes you better for uh, competition that you're going to face rolling into next year. And so uh, just being able to go out there and compete with those guys, you meet new guys, you hear their personal life, their personal stories, everything they went through during their last season. Um, it, it was really fun. And, you know, I wouldn't mind going back there this, this next summer. Yeah, it was very fun going out there, especially for my second year in a row. Um, and obviously Peyton living with him. Uh, but I think the Cape Cod League kind of teaches you a lot about yourself as a baseball player. You know, you don't. I mean, we just came literally from Omaha, where there's 20, 30,000 fans in the attendance, to going from like 500, which is a lot in the summer ball game aspect. But still, it's a different atmosphere. Uh, there's no batter's eye. Um, the fielding conditions aren't the greatest, and he didn't make one fielding error out there. He made a throwing error, but it was a tough play. They shouldn't have gave it to him. But uh, he didn't make one fielding around that, that, those surfaces, which is so impressive to me, I thought. Um, but it really just teaches you about just, you know, how much do you love the game of baseball? You're out there in the summer. Sometimes it can be really hot. You know, you got to find a different switch, different gear to get yourself ready to play that day. Um, and really what all it's about, it's really about competing about yourself out there. I mean, everyone else is tired. No one wants to be out there. You might take it lightly that day. Um, but I think that really teaches you, you know, how much do you love the game of baseball? Question for both of you and Jace, you can start. Just I know the season hasn't started, but if you were to be asked, you know, what are the person what's the personality, what's the identity of this team this year? How would you guys answer that? Yeah, I don't know if there's really an identity yet. Um, I think we're still trying to figure that out because we're going to be doing a lot of different things on offense um, because it's not going to be like a typical offense like the Razorbacks have in the past where it's basically going to long ball you to death and we're going to get some extra base hits here and there. Now, I do think we'll still be doing that, but I think we're going to start doing different things to win ball games, manufacturing runs by hit and running, uh, you know, stealing bags, getting bunts down. Um, all that different types of stuff, just moving runners over. You know, it can't, we're not just going to sit there and try to hit the long ball every single time. Uh, so, I mean, from an offensive standpoint, I don't know if we really have an identity yet, but we're going to be very, very deep in the lineup. We're going to have a lot of guys doing different things that are going to come in and help us out. Uh, on the pitching side, um, you guys have kind of talked about it earlier. I mean, we're going to be very deep. We're going to have a lot of tough, tough pitchers to, you know, like face, face or whatever. 
and I think that's going to be, I mean, we're going to strike you out. We're going to make plays behind you. Um, so I think our pitching staff is going to be phenomenal this year. Um, but as a team, I don't really know. I think we're all sh still trying to figure that out. Yeah, I think um, the word that comes to mind for me is uh, like gritty and grit. Um, kind of like I was speaking about with Cody pitching yesterday, the first three batters that he faced, he only got to go through three batters. And, um, you know, 99.9% .9 of us haven't seen live pitching since our last fall pitch that we had. And we go out there and he pitches 25 pitches between three batters. And that's the first at-bats that we've seen. And like just counts like that, working pitch counts, um, just grinding it out. I think that's one word that comes to mind uh, for me in this offense is um, just really gritty. And like Jay said, like I think we're going to steal some bags this year. I think we're going to be able to move guys over at a high success rate. Um, just little things like that that ultimately you have to do to win baseball games at this level. Um, and so, yeah, I think that, that gritty is probably, you know, as of right now, like that's probably going to change. But um, you know, I'd probably say that'd be an identity of ours. That's a good word right there. I like that. <laughs>